We're reaching the end of module four. Today we're doing module four, lesson 31. Tomorrow we'll do lesson 32. Wednesday we'll do lesson 33, which is the last lesson. And then on Thursday we'll do a little bit of a review. And then on Friday we are going to take our module four assessment. Okay. On Friday you'll also bring back your workbook. Because as you know, I like to take a look and see if you are using your time wisely and how you used this as a resource to help you study and learn these concepts. Terrific. Okay, today's learning goal is the same as last week's, last Thursday's. We're trying to figure out how to divide decimals by decimals. Wait a second. I thought this module was all about fractions. How come the learning goal has been divide decimals by decimals? What does that have to do with fractions? Oh, okay, so as, de as Reagan said, decimals can be written as fractions and fractions can be written as decimals. What else? What does division have to do with fractions? Anushka? Yeah. So are fractions just another way to write a division problem too? Yeah. So we can see that both decimals and division have to do with fractions. Very good. Let's first talk about the problem of the day. We're going to go down the left-hand side column first. And we're practicing multiplying numbers, specifically decimals, but numbers by 10 and 100. Here we go. What's 3 times 10? 30. What's 20 times 10? 200. What's 23 times 10? 200. Okay. Okay, what's 2 and 3 tenths times 10? Oh, what about, can we multiply by 100 too? What's 2 and 34 hundredths times 100? Okay, what about 23 and 4 hundredths times 10? What about 2 and 34 hundredths times 100? Hmm. Maybe all the answers are 234. Let's move on. 47 and 3 tenths times 10. Do we just get rid of the decimal point? Let's see, the next one. 4 and 73 hundredths times 10. Very nice. Now, instead of saying 47.3, let's get into the habit of saying it in word form, which would be? 47 and 3 tenths. Remember when we're doing word form, that decimal point equals the word and. Okay, very good. 4 and 73 hundredths times 100. Okay. 8 and 2 tenths times 100. Oh, very nice. 38 and 2 tenths times 10. Good. And 6 and 17 hundredths times 100. Very good. Taking a look at all these problems that you just completed in your head and told me the answer to out loud, what do we do when we multiply numbers by 10 and 100? Talk about what happens when there's a decimal point and what happens when there's no decimal point. Okay, so if we have 1 divided by 1 tenth, how can I write that as a fraction? Is that the same as 1 divided by 1 tenth like this? Mm -hmm. So what multiplication equation does that equal? 1 times 10. Which is? So therefore 1 divided by 1 tenth is 10. Okay. What's 2 divided by 1 tenth then? It'd be 2 divided by 1 tenth, which is 2 times 10, which is? 20. Oh. Then what's 7 divided by 1 tenth? 70, wouldn't it? What would 30 divided by 1 tenth be? So is dividing by 1 tenth the same as multiplying by 10? As we can see, because we know that when we divide by fractions, we multiply by the? Reciprocal of the? Divisor. What is the divisor in this case? One tenth. One tenth. So then we're multiplying by 10. Okay, let's try. Let's see if we can carry that pattern over here. What if I have 65 divided by 1 tenth? What's my divisor? One tenth. One tenth. So what would the reciprocal of the divisor be? 10. 10. So is 65 divided by 1 tenth the same thing as 65 times 10? So the answer is? Okay. So then what's 65 and 2 tenths divided by 1 tenth? Good. What about 8 hundredths divided by 1 tenth? How do you know it would be 8 tenths? Well, what's the, remember, what's the divisor here? Alexander, what's the divisor? The divisor is 0.1. 0.1. How do you say that in word form? 1 tenth. If the divisor is 1 tenth, what's the reciprocal of the divisor? Uh, ten. 10. 
So I have, this is the same as 8 hundredths multiplied by what number? 10, which would be 8 tenths. Very good. What's 36 hundredths divided by 1 tenth then, everyone? 3 and 6 tenths. Very good. Okay, let's see if we can extend that knowledge because now I have a new divisor for you. In these three problems, what is the divisor? One hundredth. One one hundredth, isn't it? So what's the reciprocal of the divisor here? One hundredth. So in my head, I can think all of these problems are the same as the whole multiplied by the reciprocal of the divisor, which would be one hundredth. Okay, with that in mind, what's three and six tenths divided by one hundredth? Okay, what's 360 divided by 100? 36,000. 36, nice. And then what's 3 and 6 tenths divided by 100? Okay, so in your mind, you can think about how dividing by a decimal or by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that divisor. Yes? Very good. This is reviewing what we learned on Thursday with Mrs. Swanson. So, when we're dividing decimals, or we're, when we're dividing numbers, sorry, is it the same as having the whole as the numerator and the denominator is the divisor? Mm -hmm. So 15 divided by 5, is that the same thing as 15 fifths? Mm -hmm. So that's equal to? 3. three. Okay. Now, if I have another problem, 15 tenths divided by 5 tenths, is that the same as 15 tenths? Is this 15 tenths? Yes. Yes. Divided by 5 tenths? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to make this denominator a whole number, actually to make them both a whole number rather, I can multiply it by 10 over 10, right? Yeah. Which is the same as 15 over 5. So my answer to 15 tenths divided by 5 tenths is what? 3. Okay, very good. Now, here I have 12 hundredths divided by 3 tenths. How can I write that as a fraction? Which one's the numerator and which one's the denominator? Sherilyn? Great. And instead of saying 0 0.12, what can we call that? 1,200. Very good. Now, what version of 1 should I multiply by here? 10 over 10. No, 100 over 100. Why is 100 over 100 better, a better version of 1 than 10 over 10? Aaliyah? Because if we multiply by uh, 10 over 10, mm -hmm. then that decimal point would just... Um, it would be here, right? Yeah, and I want to get rid of all the, I want to make both of them whole numbers. So if I multiply it by 100 over 100, my answer will be 12 over what? 30, good. Okay, now 12 thirtieths, can I simplify that fraction? Both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by what number? Okay, 6. So if I do 12 divided by 6, what do I get? And if I get 30 divided by 6, what do I get? So the answer is 2 fifths. Now, since this was in decimal form, it'd be good to put the answer into decimal form. How can we change 2 fifths into a decimal? How can we change 2 fifths into a decimal? Tara? We can multiply 2 fifths by 2 over 2. So the denominator is 10, and then we can put it mm. in decimal. Nice. And I love how you did not say you can multiply it by 2, because we're actually multiplying by 1. 2 over 2 is a form of 1, and so that equals 4 tenths, so I know that equals 0 0.4. So if we have this problem, you're going to write this problem down in your notebook, 34 and 8 tenths divided by 6 tenths. How can I write that as a fraction? How can I write that problem as a fraction? Alexander? Alexander? 34 and 8 tenths, yep. So you mean like that? Okay. So when I ask you how it goes as a fraction, you'll tell me what number should be in the numerator, which is 34 and 8 tenths, and which number should be in the denominator, which is 6 tenths. Now, how can we express this divisor as a whole number? What do we have to do to this fraction to change that divisor? We're only talking about the divisor, which is the denominator. What do we need to do? Ben? Multiply by some version of 1. What version of 1 should we do? 10 over 10, very good. And so our new version of the fraction becomes 348 over 6. Now, could we do that division problem? How would I write this division problem using standard algorithm? Which one's the whole? Lakshin? Uh, the whole is... 
348 in the hole lives in the house, and the divisor of 6 is knocking on the door. Can we use, remember, this is called standard algorithm. Can we use standard algorithm to figure this out? Yeah. Of course. But before we do that, let's estimate. 346 is pretty close to what number that's easily divisible by 6? What can we think in our head? Kevin? Ooh, 348 is fairly close to 360, and I know that 360 divided by 6 equals 60. So that means my answer should be somewhere in the ballpark or in the range of 60. Okay, now let's actually use the standard algorithm to divide and see. 6 goes into 3 how many times? It does? 0, okay. So then I can do 0 if I want, but let's just look at 34. 6 goes into 34 how many times? 5. five. Nice. And 5 times 6 is? 30. 30. Sister subtracts to get 4. Brother brings down the 8. 6 goes into 48 how many times? 8. 8. 8 times 6 is? 48. 48. So we don't have anything remaining, which means our answer is 58. Is 58 pretty close to 60? Yeah. Yeah, so we, our estimate helps us check to see, yeah, our answer is reasonable. And therefore, 34.8 divided by 6 tenths is? 58. 58. So your answer is 58.